Hey Fall Focus, it is a gorgeous Wednesday finally. After all that rain we've had, I have some sunshine on my face this morning, so it makes me happy. Um, today I'm going to go into part two of the takeaways of the book Why She Buys that I finished reading. And I'm excited to let you know I finally had a volunteer who's going to share a little bit about their book, so I will tell you that at the end of the video. Um, hopefully I don't forget. Um, so yesterday, like when I was talking about the book Why She Buys, we talked about how if you're talking to everybody, you're, you're not talking to anybody and how, especially for women, we want to be spoken to directly. We want to know that you know what's important to us. And so one of the things that, and again, this is one of those moments where when I was listening to the book and I'm like, well, duh, that makes total sense. But yet it's not something I've ever been really good at when it comes to, you know, marketing my business. Um, women don't care about features. We care about the benefit. And I've heard that before, but I didn't really understand it until I started listening to the book. So for example, let's say we're out shopping for a refrigerator and the salesperson is telling you about um, how much cubic feet the refrigerator has. It's telling you about um, this anti blah, blah, blah that it does. And it's telling you about this door lock and all these things, right? If you're a woman and you're buying that fridge, you want to know how many full pizza boxes will it hold? I don't care how many cubic feet it is. Will it hold a full pizza box? Can I just take the pizza box and put it in there? Or will it hold a full sheet cake? Or will it hold a full casserole dish, right? You don't really care about the cubic feet, the feature. You want to know the benefit. What problem is it going to help you with? Um, for example, the door lock safety, yada, yada, yada. Can I lock my kids out? I don't care about all the bells and whistles. I need to know, can I lock my kids out? Right? Um, so think about like a dishwasher, you know, um, I don't care about the PSI of the water pressure. I want to know, do I have to rinse my dishes off first? Right? And I was cracking up because the book actually opens up with a scene where she's buying a car and her biggest pet peeve about this car over and over and over are the cup holders. And you guys, I have that. I have that exact problem. The car I have is awesome. It's great, but it only has two little cup holders and not very much storage. So if you have a, a drink in one hand and a cell phone in the other, all the space is taken and it drives me nuts. Um, and when I tell, I actually told my salesperson that a few weeks ago when I was getting my car serviced and he just looked at me like I was crazy. Like it was the, just the most dumbest thing he'd ever heard. But as a female, that's important to me. I need to know that I have a place to put my cell phone, throw my sunglasses, throw my, you know, my uh, envelopes that I'm taking to the bank and things like that. So women want to purchase because it's going to enhance their life. It's going to solve a problem in our lives. And we don't really want, we don't, I shouldn't say, it's not a blanket statement, we're not stupid, we're obviously not stupid, but we don't have time to go down through the features of everything and then look it all up and see what that means. Jump to the chase, tell us what problem you're going to solve. Um, if we start asking questions and we're intrigued, then you can start talking about how you're going to solve the problem. But first and foremost, fix our problems for us. If you can fix a problem for a woman and you can catch her attention by letting her know that, you've got someone's full attention. So what I've been trying to do ever since I started reading this book and thinking about this was I started thinking, what are, again, I'm thinking of who is my client? My husband, Clarissa says, my husband's truck has 12 sunglass storage sections and a ton of storage and you're jealous. Exactly. And he doesn't even probably care that he can have all of that in his truck. Um, but by golly, a, a mom's SUV should have that kind of stuff, right? Um, but so what I've been trying to do when I'm reaching out to customers, you know, first of all, we're always going to back to when I'm reaching out, who am I trying to reach out to? So um, I did a post, I can't remember, it's been a few weeks ago now where I took a, a selfie of, um, of myself, I took a selfie of myself, and I had my reading glasses on top of my head. And I just distinctively remember a time in my life where my mom was like searching high and low for her reading glasses and I just started cracking up because they were on her head, but she couldn't find them. And so and then it made me think about the time that my husband couldn't find his keys and we found them in the refrigerator. <laughs> this was all pre-Thrive, by the way. Um, and so I just started thinking about how those, you know, they're kind of funny when you look at them on the back half, but in that moment when you're in a hurry and you've got stuff to do, um, for example, you're trying to load your kids in the car because you have to go somewhere, but you keep having to go back in the house because you forgot.
got something um, you know, on a box of Thrive that's listed as mental clarity. So if I just tell people I can help you with your mental clarity, what the heck does that mean? Um, especially for a woman, what do you mean by mental clarity? I'm sharp as a tack. We don't like to be told we're not sharp. <laughs> but if you can point out to me the actual problem it's going to help me with, for example, how would you love to make one trip to your car because you actually remembered everything you needed the first time? How would you love to not have to search for your keys because you didn't put them in the refrigerator this week? How would you love to always know where your reading glasses are even when they're on your head, right? I know those are like simple little things, but they're real life things that happen. They're real life nagging things that drive people crazy. And they're things that mental clarity can really help with. So thus Thrive can help with it. But if you just pop on and you say, hey, Thrive's great for mental clarity, that can mean a million things to a million different people. Um, and so if you can explain how you or your product in this case can help the person's problem, you're going to get their attention. You're going to get them more intrigued. Um, you know, like plain and simple, uh, do you uh, like, you know, are your knees hurting when you climb the steps? Is it, that's one thing, but can you say to a woman, um, don't you hate when your laundry's in the basement because it's so hard on your knees to go up and down the steps? That is going to trigger more of a response from a woman who has their laundry either in the basement or upstairs or, you know, someplace where the clothes aren't and they're having to carry laundry up and down the steps. If that person is suffering from discomfort in their knees, that's going to get their attention more than just saying knee pain. Because sometimes somebody might see knee pain, but they may not really think about it in their life. Um, maybe somebody suffers every single day doing laundry because it sucks to go up the steps. But when you say knee pain, in their mind, they think you're talking about a runner or a basketball player, right? So you have to put it in context to what the problem is that your customer, your ideal customer is having and how you can help. Um, one of the other things that I thought was really interesting in the book, and we don't really have to think about it too much because Lavelle has already done it for us, but one of the case studies that she was talking about was a baby holder, like a, no, no not a holder, that like a snuggly type thing. It might have even been called a snuggie, I can't remember, but it was this great idea that they had that these men at this company had. I think it was, um, oh, I can't think of now. But they make all the strollers. They're really famous for strollers. But anyway, they had come up with it. It was a great idea. They had gotten all this like really strong fabric so that the baby was safe and it passed all these standards, blah, da, 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 da. But it was like a brown plaid. And so how many moms wanted to carry their precious little baby around in brown plaid? And it was actually something that you wore and that you tucked the baby in. And so it kind of became part of your outfit. And so when this woman went into this company and said, well, duh, you're asking young, stylish, hip moms to wear brown plaid over their fabulous outfit. No wonder it's not selling. And they started getting outside designers to use really cool fabrics and make the item not only functional and safe, which is super important, but fun to wear, suddenly this, this product started like flying off the shelves. And so I feel like the DFTs have already kind of done that for us. But the thing that it made me think of is you have to remember we as Thrivers love to show, well, especially promoters, we'd love to show off our DFTs. Don't assume everybody wants to do that. Don't assume that everybody wants to wear a patch um, loud and proud. I have a lot of people who, when they first come to me, say, I'm kind of interested in it, but I, I can't wear that sticker thing at work. I can't have clients or patients or my boss, I can't have them seeing that at work. So I'm not going to be able to use it. And that's when I'm like, well, you can wear it other parts of your body. Um, so you, you know, you have to kind of, not kind of, you have to step out of who you are and what situation you're in and put yourself in your ideal client situation. So, you know, we're always talking about um, you have to take that, you know, you have to take your capsules first thing in the morning. Well, remember, if you're talking to a third shift worker, you might want to reword that to them. You know, it's really important to take it as soon as you wake up for your day. Um, and again, it's just knowing who you're talking to, having the relationship built so you know what's important to them, so you know what to say to them, but also putting it into their context so that it solves their problem. Um, I'm sure if you've done this Thrive thing for more than six months or so, you've dealt with people who are third shift and they immediately say, oh, I, I can't take that in the morning. It'll keep me up all day when I'm supposed to be sleeping. And so that's when you have to watch your wording and you have to put it into context. Oh no, this is going to be great because you're going to take it when you want to start your day. It doesn't have to be morning. It could be three o'clock in the afternoon, but it's the start of 
your day. So again, I'm solving their problem. They're struggling at three o'clock in the afternoon to wake up and get their day started. So I'm going to help them fix their problem. Um, does that all make sense? I, I, I know, I know, like I said, I know when I was listening to the book, it made such total sense that it was almost stupid that I was like, well, how, why haven't I thought about this more? But again, we're just so ingrained from television, newspaper, magazines, billboards. Um, we're ingrained that you tell people, oh, the awesome features of your product. You tell them, um, you know, it's pharmaceutical grade. You tell them that it does mental clarity. You tell them that it's going to help with weight management. But if you can say, you know, I know you're struggling with your, I, I know you're struggling to maintain your weight, or I know you're struggling to whatever with your weight, this is how we can fix it. I know you're struggling with remembering this crazy schedule your kids have with all these different practices, and this can help you with that. If you can put it in terms where it will solve their problem, their problem, not everyone's problem. Remember, we're talking to just one person at a time. If you can solve their problem, you're going to do better with it. So back to the post I did where I put my, I had my reading glasses on my head and I was like, I forget exactly how I worded it, but basically, you know, if you're struggling with finding your reading glasses, if you can't make, make it to the car in one trip because you just can't remember everything you need, I can help. Um, I got a lot of responses, not actually on the post. I got a lot of responses in private message because again, a lot of people, especially women, don't want to admit that we can't find our keys, that we can't get ourselves out to the car. Um, you know, we're in this world where we're supposed to do it all and be it all and superwoman this and superwoman that. Nobody wants to admit that we don't always have it together. So um, just by saying, you know, here's a couple things I know happen and I can help, people actually reach out and say, well, what do you mean how can you help? What is, what is this? Is this, um, you know, is it, is it a test, I, like a puzzle I do every day? Is it an exercise I do every day? You know, what is it? And so it was just a really fun way for me to reach to people without throwing my thrive at them um, and offering up that I could help them with something if it was something they were struggling with, but I didn't say how I was going to help. I made them come to me so we could start the conversation. So just start thinking about this. When you are working on promotions or you're working on emails for people or text messages um, or a Facebook post, try to think who is my client, who's my ideal customer that I wanna to talk to, what is something that they really struggle with on a daily basis? You know, what, like what keeps them up at night? Um, and, and it's funny because when you think about, oh, keys in the refrigerator, that's not going to keep somebody up at night. It actually does keep some people up at night. I know for a, probably a week or so, um, my husband really struggled because he just kept thinking that that was somebody, like that was something that someone with Alzheimer's <laughs> would do. And so he was really kind of stressing out about it. Uh, which didn't help. The whole reason he was leaving the keys in the fridge was because he was stressed at the time and he had a lot going on and it just happened. But um, it might seem silly, but think about it. If that happens to someone, is that is that nagging at them? Is it um, making their day cumbersome? Is it, you know, I mean, any busy moms out there that have made the 18 trips in and out of the house to get everything you need only to come back out and realize the kids had unhooked themselves and you got to hook them back up and blah, blah, blah. You know, it, you know it's aggravating. You know it adds to your day. It takes away that time um, that otherwise you would have. And so if you can identify one of those kinds of problems and then reach out maybe in a funny way or a serious way or both, try a different way, see what kind of response you get, um, you know, let them know I can help with that. I have something that can help with that. I found a way to stop doing that um, or I found I found something that's really helping me get past that um, just kind of throw that out there leave it at that let them let them be intrigued and let them come to you you know hey I have that problem and she found a way to fix it I want to find out what it is she's doing versus oh she's saying that that thrives gonna help my mental clarity I, I'm I don't need that right do you see how, how different that is and how much better that feels to help people with an actual problem and actually get their attention and hook them and bring them in. Um, so anyway, that's my takeaway number two. Um, I hope these are helping you guys. I really did love the book. There were some parts of, the, of this particular book where it got kind of statistics or not kind of, it got into statistics and I'm not a numbers girl. And so part of it, I was like, woo, kind of faded in and out. But trust me, I did get the important parts and it does help. And I think it's just awesome the way that I can read a book and you can read a book and we'll both get some similar and some completely different things out of it. So if anybody else chooses to read this book and you find other big things um, that stand out to you, let me know because I would love to share that. But these, 
yesterday's video and today, those are really the two biggest things. There's lots of case studies in the book that bring to life what she's saying and help it really ingrain in your mind and make sense. So, and I, and I love that whole um, hearing how different companies, and these are big companies. This woman worked with great big companies, multi-million dollar companies that you would just assume had it together, especially the, like the example of the baby company. You would just assume that a company that's marketing to moms was actually thinking of moms, but they weren't. So it's, the book was really interesting in that realm. Um, but yeah, so tomorrow, uh, which will be Thursday, at 10.30, I'm going to go live with Jessie Sayerstahl. She has listened to the book Girl Code, and I know a lot of you are listening to it. Um, I am a huge fan of Girl Code. I have listened to it probably three or four times, you know, one time straight through kind of thing, and the other times I just sort of hop on every now and then when I need a little dose of Girl Code. Um, but she's going to hop on here tomorrow at 10.30 with me, and we're going to talk about her top three takeaways from the book. Um, if you haven't yet read the book or you are reading the book, this will be a really good one for you to listen to. Um, I love it. I mean, I could talk about that book all day long and, and the things that I learned from it, not only about myself, but about other people and how to communicate with other people. Um, it's just, it's a crazy good, amazing book. So we'll be back on here tomorrow at 1030. That'll be, um, me with Jesse Sayers doll. We're going to do the dual live and we're going to talk about that book. So remember if you're reading something and you've got, and you want to share, please let us know. Um, and as always guys, I hope, hope, hope you are keeping track of your daily focus, your weekly focus and your monthly focus. I'm going to throw it out. Like I always do. I am not seeing a lot of live videos coming out of people. You are missing the mark. If you are not doing live videos, um, this group here right now in this group, if you want me to interview you about your book or you want to try, if, if you want to get your feet wet doing a video inside of this group, it's a very safe place. We're super, super nice. It'd be a good one. And I promise rip off that bandaid. Once you do, it's, it's so much easier. Um, but I'm not seeing a lot, a lot of live videos. Um, I've talked to a lot of the leaders on the team. I'm not hearing a ton of three-way calls. And um, it's great to learn all this stuff and it's great to be motivated and it's great to be excited, but if you don't implement it, it doesn't matter. So if I'm not seeing lives happening, if I'm not hearing people doing three-way calls, if I'm not seeing new orders coming through, um, then I feel like you guys might be watching the videos and you might be getting excited, but you're not actually doing some of the things we're talking about. So remember it's, um, what is it? Motivation gets you in the game, but habits keep you in the game. So start developing these habits and you don't even have to come up with your own habits they're already written out for you on the daily checklist the weekly and the monthly um so with that little tough love get on it guys i promise these things are there for a reason so if you have questions let me know otherwise i will see you tomorrow at 10:30 with jesse bye